All right, guys, today we are going to be going over the 2023 knife haul or state of the collection for my knives overall. Now, we are not going to be or we are going to be trying to keep it as limited as possible when it comes to wilderness and survival knives, though I did get some awesome pickups for that or in that regard. Things like the Demco Free Rain, things like the 3V SRK, things like the Winkler um, Blue Ridge Hunter. Those are some awesome tools or knives that I picked up this year. But today we are going to be primarily focusing on EDC knives because I do prefer and love my EDC knife collection as far as collecting knives go. These are the knives that I'm actually like collecting or going out and collecting. And so I have some pretty interesting ones. If you guys are new to the channel, there will definitely be some interesting pickups here. And if you just haven't watched the channel in a little while, there are also gonna be some interesting pickups because I try to you know, keep my um, collection pretty good or try to maintain it or keep it going pretty strong. So there's gonna be a lot of knives here. We're gonna try to cover them as fast as possible but understand there's over 55 knives here so this is going to be a lightning round for most of these knives so we're not really going to be sitting here and talking about any one individual tool for a particularly long time but most of these knives either do or will have more dedicated long-term videos like I said, either published or coming. So anyways, let's start it off with fixed blades. So first off with the fix, fixed blades, we are going to be talking about the one that is um, not actually officially in the collection. This is one of my Hartley knife and tool kind of demo knives. This is because I am good friends with um, the owner of Hartley knife and tool, and he sends me knives to test out, to play with, and most importantly, to showcase to you guys. He doesn't make a terribly high volume of knives, but this is one that is cool. This is a TWR. It is a, you know, it's a knife that you either love or hate the, um, you know, tip shape on it, but it's purpose driven and a lot of people don't always get that. Next up, we have the Topps Ice Dagger. I've had this for years and I'm classifying this more as an EDC knife, even though it's more of what I consider a self-defense knife, but my self-defense knives end up in EDC rotation more frequently than not. All right, next one up is going to be the BTG or Black Triangle Group. This is the Senka from them. I've had this one for a little while now, but this is just a go-to G10 tool. Once again, leaning a little bit more self-defense. And if you guys notice a trend here, most of my fixed blades that are not dedicated to survival or wilderness are more dedicated towards um, more dedicated towards self-defense. All right, next one up is going to be the good old-fashioned TCAL knives with their nightshade reverse tonto. Once again, more of a self-defense blade here, but still could be reasonably utilitarian. Okay, next one is going to be one of the more utility style blades, and this is a cute little guy. This is a Armager 2 from Demco Knives. This tiny, tiny little knife is more of a three finger blade and uh, definitely, you know, it has a clip point, could be more self-defense styled, but with a very small like, two inch blade, like this thing is roughly the width of three fingers. So this thing is pretty darn small, but this guy is the next one. One up. So tiny little armature too, but a cool little almost like keychain style knife. All right, and finally rounding out the collection of fixed blades, we have the Browse Blades Silent Soldier V2. So that is this guy. Once again, very similar to the Armager 2, more of a kind of fun, unique, quirky, um, utility style blade. Very small, I'm not gonna be able to get like a full four finger grip or five finger grip on it. All right, now into the true lightning round of folders. So first off, we are going to be going over a handful of Emersons. So I'm gonna pull some of these guys out here. All right, so first one up is going to be the Kershaw Emerson CQC 6 collab. And this is probably one of my more favorite versions of the Emerson, Emerson Kershaw collabs. This one is rocking D2 tool steel for the blade. And I've just gone ahead and polished it up, made it a little bit more usable. This is just a fun utility blade. Next one to that is my old school, probably one of the oldest knives in my collection. This is the Emerson Minicom or Mini Commander. This one was made in 2009. It is used, abused, but still running strong. All right, next to that one is one of my older knives in the collection again. This is an Emerson 2013. This is an Emerson uh, Mini Horseman or Mini CQC8. Or I should say Horseman or Mini CQC8. 
pretty cool thing on this one. It does have a 762 um, by 39 as, or case kind of um, end, if you will, as the thumb stud for that, or thumb disc, I guess you could say. All right, after that, we have the Emerson Ensar, and this is the Navy Search and Rescue. Of course, this is one of my more weird or peculiar blades, and uh, yeah, this one is pretty darn cool. It is a survival knife, or sorry, rescue knife through and through, and one that rescue knife that I don't really think gets a lot of attention that it deserves. All right, Sticking with the theme of Emerson's, we're not going exactly in chronological order here, but we're gonna just go through all of the Emerson's while we can. All right, so next one up, we have the unreasonably new addition to the collection, and that is the Emerson Bulldog. This one is with the Thunder Storm finish or thunder wash finish, something like that, it is basically their black DLC that has been stonewashed. Pretty cool, pretty cool wash if you ask me. Then we have, of course, the full-sized Emerson Commander. So we have the Minicom and also the full-sized Commander here. Next to that, we have a really cool one, probably one of my favorite Emersons. I don't know, I feel like I say that about a lot of Emersons in general, but this one is definitely one of my favorites. And this is the Emerson Patriot. This is a pretty darn cool blade. It is big, it is definitely a larger blade, and it has a very unique clip point, kind of buoy styled tip with a subtle recurve to it. All right, last Emerson in the collection, in the newest addition to the Emerson collection, and definitely one of the most rare Emersons out there, or one of the more rare, I should say, maybe not most rare, but one of the more rare ones is the Emerson Elvia, and this is basically designed to be a pocket pickall, and so it's designed to be held like this. It's more of a, you know, fighting kind of knife or self-defense typed blade, but once again, very cool, very unique, and these things are honestly super collectible and very rare. You hardly ever see Elvias out in the wild. All right, now we're going on to one of the next larger brand collections that I have here, and that is the Spyderco collection. So first up, we have the Spyderco Manix 2. As I've said in other videos, this is my CPM S110V blade, mirror polished, of course, with a black G10 handle. So it initially kind of looks like a basic vanilla S30V with black G10, but it is in fact an S110V. Now, next one up is actually a Plain Jane Basic Spyderco Para 3. This is probably the oldest Spyderco in my collection as far as, as long as I've owned them. Um, I have had Spydercos before this one, but this is just the oldest one that I currently have in the collection. Um, so like I said, this is just a Para 3 with CPM S30V in black G10. Next one up is the Spyderco Spidey Chef, just with the plain um, kind of gunmetal gray titanium, and of course, LC200N. Next up, we have the Spyderco Senta Fonte. This is a pretty weird and wild one no one really knows about, but it's a pretty cool, pretty slim lined, um, designed originally to be like a budget gentleman's folder. It's a lockback VG10 made in Saki City. Pretty cool blade, not too special. I don't tend to EDC it that frequently. Next one up is the Spyderco Delica 4 in K390 that I blued so you guys can see there and yeah just overall looks pretty cool with a nice little forced patina it's just a good old-fashioned um, delica four hard to go wrong with these guys all right next one up is the spider coast smock once again in cpm s30v and it's just a good overall workhorse really do love these smocks they carry so well i did kind of customize it with blue um, hardware a purple little um, lock bar kind of button if you will so a little bit customized, a little bit cool. Then lastly, rounding out my Spyderco collection and realizing that all my Spydercos are nice and dirty is my Paramilitary 2, and this one is in CPM Rex 45. So a little bit of a um, different steel, and of course this is a Color Shop exclusive with the green, or OD green and blaze orange scales. So pretty cool, this one's very well tuned, very it's making a liar out of me, but very smooth, very smooth closing and stuff. So overall, really cool um, Spyderco's. 
All right, next one up, and as much smack as I talk about this brand, I still have eight knives from them, so must not completely hate them, but this is none other than Benchmade. So I'll start off with my favorite Benchmade in the collection. This is the Benchmade 630 full-size skirmish or large skirmish. This guy is a big, beefy blade, putting up against a full-sized um, <clears throat> 2750 Adamus, you guys can see that this skirmish still absolutely dwarfs the Adamus, and the Adamus is not a small knife at all. So the 630 skirmish is a big, big blade. But 630 skirmish by Benchmade is the first one. Next one is the 2750 Auto Adamus, so you guys just saw there. Really hard hitting, fast deploying uh, Adamus. Next up is going to be one of the oldest knives in my collection and the first real knife that I got that got me into the knife world. And this is the Benchmade 550 Grip Tel Grip Tillion with the black finish and serrated, partially serrated blade. So definitely a user, definitely a workhorse, but one of the first. All right, next one up is the Benchmade Bug Out with the Blade HQ Special Edition. So CPM 20 CV blade, JG10 handles, gives it that kind of Stormtrooper vibe with the black and white kind of look to it. So definitely enjoy that. Then we have the avocado colored OD green and tan or FDE tan blade on the 273 Mini Adamus. Then we have the 940, just classic 940. This one is a bit of a user, so it definitely has a little bit of a blade sharpened on it, but I have restored this blade at least to a nice keen edge. But this is just a 940 Osborne, so nothing too, too fancy there. Then I have a 556 Mini Reptilian with 154 CM blade steel on this guy. And then I have a 557 Mini Reptilian, which is the Tonto offering of the Mini Grip. And this one's an S30V with aftermarket G10 handles on it. So pretty cool. The whole lineup is pretty, pretty neat as a whole. And those are my bench mates. All right, guys, now let's do a little bit of a lightning round of brands that I have about three knives of her. So first off, we're going to go over probably my favorite three knives of like one singular brand, and that is the CRK or Chris Reeve Knives Umnumzon, the Sabenza 21, and the Large and Cozy. I also should say this is a large Sabenza as well, but all of these guys are absolutely beautiful. Let's see if I can get them all in the picture together. So like I said, large and cozy, large Sabenza and an Umnumzon. So absolutely love these three beautiful knives. Really cool to have them all in the collection. So these guys are, like I said, three, my three Chris Reeve knives. Next up, we have Demco knives and I have three of their knives. I have two 20.5s, as you guys can see, or 80 20.5s here. Got one that's a shark's foot and another one that's a clip point. And then of course I have the shark cub as well. Then as far as other brands that I have three knives of, I have Civivi with their Elementum. Then I have the Spiny Dogfish, which is another collab if I can get this guy open. <laughs> then I have the Natural or JG10 Spiny Dogfish. And then of course the Cubit or Quibit um, here. So pretty cool knives. Um, not the largest fan of Civivi, but they do make some pretty cool stuff. So, so yeah, pretty cool knives from Civivi. Then jumping over to a few of the brands where I have two knives, we have of course, Hinder with my XM18 three and a half inch and Hinder with my XM18 three inch. This is the Spanto on the three inch and a recurve on the three and a half inch. Beautiful knives, do really love my Hinders almost as much as my Chris Reeves. Then of course I have TRM with the Neutron and the Shadow 2, which are also pretty freaking cool knives in and of themselves. Then I have Protec with two completely blacked out Protec. So I have the Strider SNG or Auto SNG. One of my favorite knives, a knife that I tried and did successfully get after hunting for a while. The Auto SNG is very cool. And of course I have an entirely blacked out Blade HQ exclusive um, Malibu in CPM S45 VN. So very cool knives. Like I said, both of them are blacked out aluminum handled uh, button lock knives. So very similar in their own right to each other. 
Then of course I have two ZTs. I have the ZT0550CF carbon fiber version and this is a really pretty awesome blade. And then of course I have the ZT0562, of course once again carbon fiber edition. So both of these guys are pretty cool. I do really like my carbon fiber knives um, or additions of ZT knives because they do some really awesome, in my opinion, very handsome carbon fiber blades or sorry, handled blades. All right, guys, now we are going to be wrapping it up with the last lightning round. And these are all going to be knives that I have only one from from each of these brands. So this is knives that I don't have a you know, a huge collection of their knives in particular or brands I don't have a huge collection of, but these are all knives that I have at least one from each brand. So first up, we are going to talk about the Spartan Harzi Folder. This is one of my favorites, a very beautiful blade. I feel like I say these are one of my favorites a lot, but I do have a lot of favorites in my knife collection, but this is just one of my most gorgeous or at least more gorgeous blades. The Battle Babe is pretty great and this has a beautiful Damascus steel blade from Chad Nichols. So absolutely gorgeous blade and a pretty darn big knife to boot. So that is the Battle Babe from Spartan Knives. And it is the Spartan Harzi folder. Next, next up we have the Heretic Knives Manticore X. Of course, this is the Bounty Hunter edition. So this is one of their special editions and uh, is pretty cool. One of my favorites for sure. The Heretic Manticore X, of course, is more of a combat Trudon sized uh, OTF, but very cool blade. Absolutely love this guy. So it is in Magna Cut steel as well. But just a really, really cool blade. Don't have a whole lot of OTFs and don't carry a lot of OTFs to be honest, but that is one of the cooler ones that is very, just kind of speaks to me ultimately. All right, next one up is of course a Strider SNG, or sorry, Strider Knives SNG. And this one of course is with a tire striped blade, flame anodized uh, lock bar side with gunner grip G10 on the non-lock bar side. Just a really great overall all around blade and hard to go wrong with a good old fashioned Strider. So Strider SNG, really cool. Um, yeah, just a cool blade. Next up is the McNeese Mac 2, and this is the three inch version. So it is a nice tiny little guy, but still you can get a full grip on it. And uh, it has this one in particular is a CPM 20 CV blade. So this is, like I said, a McNeese, or McNeese Mac 2, and it's just overall pretty cool blade. Not my favorite by far, but it is a pretty decent little folder. All right, next one up is the Ultratech from Microtech. This is my last remaining one. I have had more Ultratechs over the course of the years, but this is my remaining one. Of course, it has the tri-grip pattern for the handle scales, which is a little bit of an old school pattern. And of course, this is a double-edged dagger with a fully serrated upper edge and a just normal non-serrated lower edge. So this one is an L-Max. Nothing too fancy here, but it is a pretty cool blade. So overall, pretty awesome knife, not gonna lie definitely a fun and more defensive kind of styled um, folder or OTF in this case. All right, next one up is my American Blade Works or ABW Model 1 with the heavily worn clift blade. Of course, Ultem handles, and this one is also in Magna Cut. Very smooth action. It is running on bearings, but it is a speedy little guy. So really cool folder, and I do enjoy EDC in that one. Next up is the Tour Chasm Widow. And this is a, once again, kind of smaller uh, EDC knife, definitely similar size to the McNeese Mac 2. I think this one's actually just a little bit bigger, but it is pretty cool. This was a Smoky Mountain Knife Works exclusive with a heavily textured black G10 with a little bit of red accent on it. So pretty cool blade. It's like I said, a little bit on the smaller side, but you can still get a good four finger grip, very sticky jimping, and of course a very nice Tonto style blade. So pretty cool blade. Once again, I don't actually tend to EDC this one too, too much, but it is still a very cool, very unique um, blade nonetheless. <coughs> 
All right, next one up is a modified CRKT large Pilar. This one, of course, has a flipper tab delete and is sporting some nice um, carbon fiber handles on it. And once again, very smooth because this one is running on ball bearings. Absolutely quick little deployer and really good for that kind of spidey flick or middle finger flick. So it works pretty darn well, pretty cool. I don't tend to eat either. EDC this one too too much but it is cool and it does occasionally end up in the pocket all right next one up is the stout knife or sorry Devo knives pony stout in blue um, denim g10 here and pretty cool or g10 blue denim canvas micarta so pretty cool a little bit of a different blade not my favorite blade shape in the world but is pretty cool pretty standard and just overall just a good standard EDC knife. So not necessarily my favorite, but not a bad knife either. Again, very good, very strong spidey flick. It has a very unique kind of sheep's foot blade. So yeah, Devo Knives Pony Stout. All right, next one up is the Ontario Knife Company or OKC Rat Model 1. This is of course the Red Rat. So this is in CPM S35VN blade steel. So pretty high performance blade steel for an Ontario Rat. And of course these guys are no longer being made, but very cool and I do enjoy having it in the collection. It does see a good amount of use. All right, next one up is the Hogue Deca. And the Hogue Deca is a pretty cool blade. Overall, just a good workhorse. This is actually one that I put to use quite frequently because it is so darn thin and slicey. So it's kind of my stand-in for the bug out. Next to that, we have the Mantis Fly Switch. So this is my Balasong in the collection. And this is a thick, hefty piece of steel, um, but it's a piece of CPM one, or sorry, 154 CM, not CPM, but 154 CM has a beautiful recurved blade. Absolutely love the blade on this blade styling. Um, and of course, like I said, it is a balisong. So as I struggle to flip it on camera, um, but it is a balisong. So pretty cool. I don't really know any tricks per se, but it is a pretty cool balisong. It's cool to have one in the collection for sure. So I do enjoy it. It's a pretty cool knife. Um, but at least it doesn't see too, too much pocket time. All right, next one up is the Paragon Phoenix. All right, next one up is the Paragon Phoenix. And this is a gravity knife, another gravity knife, similar to the Balasong, but a little bit more simplistic. And so you can just flick it out, flick it open, or flick it out and open or flick it closed. So pretty cool. Once again, it is a gravity knife, so you do have to get your hand and your wrist kind of action involved, but it is a pretty cool blade overall. And it is not without its faults, but it is a pretty cool knife overall. And this one I believe is in CPM S30 V because this is an older school um, Paragon Phoenix. So pretty cool blade. Once again, kind of a little bit more of a collector's item, doesn't see as much frontline use. All right, last one up is my GEC Pocket Carver. And this guy, once again, doesn't see too, too much use because I'm not a huge trad knife guy, but it is pretty cool and it does see some use occasionally. So that is the GEC Pocket Carver and that rounds out the whole collection. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless and I'm out.